with the Amcrest AMG L300 and AMG L300W GPS trackers. Before you begin, please make sure your device is turned on and attached to the vehicle or asset you want to track. To get started, you will need to activate your device first. Simply go to amcrest.com forward slash GPS dash activation and complete the activation form on the screen. A link to this site is also available on the ampressgpstracker.com login page. Once completed, you should receive a confirmation email containing your login credentials. Next, go to ampressgpstracker.com and sign in to your account with your credentials. After logging in, the main screen will display with a view of the map. By default, an asset icon or location tag will be displayed, indicating the geo position of your device. Clicking on the icon will bring up the most recent information for the asset, such as name, latest speed, battery level, odometer, date, and last time and location for the device. On the left side of the screen, you will see the main menu with quick links to map, trips, events, zones, and alerts. There is a menu button where you can access your profile, change your password, log out, as well as some useful links. Below, your assets or devices will be listed here. Clicking on a device will show a snapshot of the same information as the location tag. Below, you can select to view location to recenter your device's location on the map. Street View uses Google Maps to show you a street level view of your asset's physical location. Asset Info shows trips, which are updated every 15 minutes, and events. Telemetry data lets you choose a date and export metrics to an Excel compatible viewer to view device telemetry details, such as GPS accuracy, speed, azimuth, altitude, longitude, latitude, odometer, battery level, and other metrics. This kind of compiled raw data within a single report becomes useful analytics for fleet management and tracking needs. The individual tracking link gives you a trackable link that can be copied and shared with others. This is useful when wanting to share device location with anyone via an easy-to-view URL link without logging in. The link will be valid for three days. Settings is used to change your device's name and set your preferred notification types to receive notifications, SMS text, and email. You can specify your desired values for each separate alert. Designate an email at which to receive alerts, as well as a phone number for SMS text alerts. You can do this for each individual alert, including speed limit, battery percentage, panic alert, motion on or off, and charging connected or disconnected. After making changes, be sure to click the Save button at the bottom. To exit, you can click Cancel or scroll up to the top right and click on the X. This will take you back to the main view of the map. On the right side of the screen, there are some useful tools. The plus and minus icons let you zoom in and zoom out on the map. The stack icon lets you customize your map source by selecting the default standard road map which works well for most users, or you can select roads only. Terrain, an altered roadmap, satellite, terrain only, or hybrid. And finally, there is a traffic view switch that can be toggled on or off to let you see live traffic on the map, which can be useful when tracking a device. Now that we've covered the map, let's see how to view recent trips. Click on the Trips tab. Then select the device for which you want to see trips. 
and select the date. You can export the trip details in a simple to read file by clicking export to PDF. And then you can either download or print the PDF. Custom PDF export allows you to choose a date range for your export file. Below you will see all the trips for the device and the date you selected. Here you can click full trip to view the path of the entire trip at once on your map. Or click run trip and the map will play back the path of the trip from start to finish. You can adjust the playback speed on the control bar at the top. You can also rewind, fast forward, play, pause, replay, and stop. Next, to view events, click on the Events tab at the top. Then select the device for which you want to see events. And choose the type of event you'd like to see. And choose the date. The event choices are Alert, Battery, Charging, Power, SOS, Speed, and Trip. Let's see what each of these events mean. Alert shows events when your device has entered or exited a zone. Battery shows events for when the battery level is below the level you set in the settings, which in this example was under 20%. Charging shows events when device charging is on or off. Power simply shows events when the device is powered on or off. SOS refers to when the panic button is triggered on the device. In this example, there are no records displayed since no SOS events were recorded. Speed shows an event when the device's tracked speed has exceeded the limit set in settings, which was over 51 miles per hour in this example. The event will show up as overspeed. And lastly, trip shows an event when a trip has started or ended. You can see events appear below and click on each one individually to view its details as we've seen here. Or export event details to CSV to view details in an Excel compatible viewer. Zones and alerts are key areas of focus and are an essential feature of the GPS tracker platform. We will briefly go over them here, but for more details, please see our zone creation and alerts configuration video. To create a zone, click on the Zones tab. A zone is simply a virtual geographic boundary, or geofence on the map. By creating a zone, accompanied with alerts, you'll know the instant a device enters or exits a zone. To exit the screen, click Got It. Click on Add New Zone. Your cursor will now show a blue dot. To draw a zone, Click and drag on the map to find an area you want for your zone, and then click to create a minimum of three anchor points around the desired area on the map. You can continue making points to create your zone. When finished, click on the original anchor point, or simply double-click on the map to complete the zone. A prompt will display asking to enter a zone name, and to select the type of zone. If you plan on having multiple zones, it helps to choose a name that identifies the zone. Keep-in zones are geofenced areas designed to keep your device inside the zone. If the device exits the zone, an alert will occur. No-go zones are designed to keep your device out of the zone. If the device enters this zone, an alert will occur. When finished, click Create Zone. And click OK. You'll be prompted to also create an alert for the created zone. Click Yes, and then you'll be taken to the Alerts tab. To add a new alert, click on Add New Alert. Here you can name your alert. If you plan on having multiple zones and alerts, it helps to choose a name that identifies the alert with the zone it will be connected with. Choose the device the alert will apply to and the zone it's associated with. Then enter a phone number and or email where you want to receive the alert. Enter optional information 
and click Save to finish. For more information on alerts, please check out our Zone Creation and Alert Configuration video. We hope this video has provided you with an overview of the Amcrest GPS Tracker platform. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more instructional videos from Amcrest.